Hey y'all, I'm currently in a small town called Elk Bend, Idaho, and I'm in a place called the Dugouts. It's along the Salmon River, just outside of town. I'm gonna introduce you to the gentleman who constructed the dugouts. This guy, his name was Dugout Dick. And uh, it's a fascinating story, so we're gonna go explore the dugouts real fast. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Dick. <laughs> Now, Dugout Dick was born Richard Zimmerman in 1916 in Illinois. And he had a pretty rough childhood growing up. His dad was not a kind man. And he ran home several times throughout his life. Didn't have much of an education. So World War II came around. In 1942, Dick uh, went and served in the military. He served out in the Pacific. Uh, he was a truck driver. Now, apparently he had seen some things during the war that was upsetting to him and he became much of a hermit afterwards and in 1947 he wound up here in elk bend and constructed this entire structure here this was his first structure and it's known as the cabin and you have this little porch right here and there's great video of him uh, playing banjo and musical instruments and singing out here on this porch. Uh, he was quite the Renaissance man. Nobody owned the land. It belonged to the federal government. It's what's called the Bureau of Land Management, BLM. And he just decided he's just going to make this his home. And he did. So he carved out this cabin with the rocks that used along this mountainside behind it. And this is where he lived. So this was uh, Dick's crop field here. And he used to tend the land here, uh, grow his own food and fish in the river right there. He, he was well taken care of and very resourceful. Uh, and over the years, he built this entire hillside of what I guess were, were known as cabins. Now, after Dick died in 2010, uh, the Bureau of Land Management came out here and, and, and dynamited the cabins. Uh, they, they were good 60 foot in some of them. Uh, but there, there's still remnants up there. We're going to go up there and, and explore, though. But this whole hillside was was it was uh, like apartment buildings that dug out of the same rock and everything. And it took him 50 years to do so. He worked until he was about 90 years old on on this ongoing project. Now we're going to go back to Dick's cabin and explore it. But I want to come up here first. A little tricky here. Ugh. I wanted to explore up here first and work my way down. So these are where the cabins were. And Dick would charge people, I think it's 25 cents a night. Uh, and I think it's either 25 cents a night or, or no, it's a dollar a night or $25 a month <laughs> which is a great deal and apparently they're very comfortable that yeah, you didn't need air condition or anything like that but this is where they all were the paths have been I guess knocked down but you could see where everything was at one time still now he had people live on the property for years and later in life they kind of took care of them uh, but this is a uh, this is where they lived, and, and you can still see little pieces of wood strewn about. And we're gonna be coming down here into the uh, crop field. But to get a little more information, he he became kind of famous. Uh, he was featured in uh, National Geographic magazine, People magazine. These, these were magazines back in the 70s and 80s that were 
were pretty well red, not anymore. But uh, I have to walk a little slow here. Oh, this old ladder here. Yeah, these were his his trees here. This is probably his ladder. Yeah. Look at that. I don't know what kind of tree this is, but it looks like there's fruit on there. I don't know if that's a apple or let's see. Maybe an apple. Yeah, I think they're apples. Oh, there's a little cave out here. Oh, I almost fell. It's a little cave over there. Yeah, this is a this is definitely a structure of some sort. Uh, let's see what's in here. Yeah, it looks like they they closed it off. Oh. Yeah, I guess this is this is part of the area where they they closed it off. You can see there was an opening one time, but not anymore. Here's some more remnants of dug out dead. Looks like some some old cans up here maybe. A little sardine can. Yeah, this whole hillside here, as well from the pictures I saw, was also uh, uh, little cabins in there. Apparently, he did a, a fantastic job. They were they were structurally sound. They weren't dangerous or anything like that, and people stayed in them for years. So even as a recluse, uh, Dick found love. He he uh, he did what what they used to do back in the day and had a, a pen pal out of Mexico and that was his sweetheart for a while and then he married a woman uh, I believe her name was Bonnie and Bonnie and uh, moved out here with, with Dug Out Dick and they lived in the cabin right here and they, they were uh, they were happily married for a while and then I guess she just got tired of living in, in a cave <laughs> and uh don't blame her. I, I, I guess that does get a little old. But the conditions here during the winter time are brutal. So uh, she left Dick, and uh, it broke his heart. Uh, he never really truly got over her. Uh, and but he talked fondly about her all throughout his life. Later in life, he would give these interviews right here on his on his uh, porch. I make yogurt out a lot of my food and stuff, and for years I having trouble, can't eat boarding house food, and working around these ranches and here and there. I run away from home in Michigan, I was started, in, and I come out here on a freight train in Nebraska and worked out there. Well, and I finally come over here, and uh, well, like I said, I can't eat boarding house food, and so I found way to raise a garden. So I come out here and uh, along the Salmon River here and start digging in here. And I didn't have nothing to make a house out of any rocks, so I'm making everything out of rocks and stuff like that, you know. Well, I make my own shoes, too. You see, I got my homemade shoes on here. Mm -hmm. I make them out of, well, I make them out of rubber tires and shingle nails and other old shoes. And, and uh, I'm pretty good at doing those things. I've been here making my own fly swatter, too. You see, I just made out of old rubber. Pretty good swatter. And, uh, <laughs> Wind's picking up. So he would give... Uh, people music lessons and singing lessons and everything else right here and uh let's see if the, this is open maybe i think it is open it's definitely open oh should we go inside i don't see anything that says you can't go inside no signs nothing like that Yeah, we'll go inside. It's windy. Okay, we're inside. <laughs> that was a heavy door. Oh, wow. 
that old stove right here. It's tiled too, cement. Now he did all of this himself. Here's a whole kitchen sink and I'm careful where I'm stepping just in case it gives away. It's, it's old in here. Now I'm curious, I'm just gonna try to turn it on. Nope. So Dick claimed that this was haunted. That his wife, Bonnie, when she, when she left him, she was murdered uh, by a guy she shacked up with somewhere. And uh, he claims after that happened that she used to visit him here. And he was very adamant about it. This may have been his bedroom here. This old door. It's a fantastic old door. What's this? Is this electric box? No, it's a refrigerator. Okay. Good job, Dick. Here's his broom. It's still there. I don't see any of the rooms. This is still the kitchen. I don't see any other rooms. But apparently, the, I think this goes back some. Maybe they, maybe they, I don't know, reinforce the wall? I, I don't know. Right, his cabins went really far back into the into the mountainside. Well, not here. May, there may be a basement. All right, let's go outside. All right, we're back outside. I don't know. I think this this is possibly another room back in here somewhere. This all of this. I just don't think we can access it. Well, Dick died in 2010, and uh, he was in the nursing home for a few weeks, and he wound up hitchhiking out of the nursing home and came came back here uh, at 94 years old. So he, he lived uh, quite the life. Uh, but he uh, he is buried in Illinois next to his family now. He had several brothers and sisters, so they took his body there. And he has a nice uh, military plaque and and uh, for his service in World War II. So, yeah, this is a story about Dugout Dick. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, if you all ever get out here, definitely swing by. It's a, it's a pretty cool place. We'll see you all later.